This is really intimidating to me, guys. Um, I have really, I have fought this for two days now. Um, that God's been laying stuff on my heart to get up here and speak. I reached out to Heather this morning, knowing that that's what God wanted me to do today. But this is really not my forte to get up here and speak to everybody. Um, just a little backstory again with Heather and I. Heather was introduced to me by my sister who went to school with her in a very, very difficult time in my life. A time that I had lost a whole lot of my hope, my faith, and trust in God. And for a year and a half, I don't remember much of anything. Um, Heather had worked with me through her own uh, trials that she had to overcome, um, losing grace. And um, I'm very, very thankful for Heather. Um, it was a dark time, but I never, in all my trials, I never um, lost hope in getting back to where I needed to get. And I know that there are people, and I don't know if there's somebody in this room that I'm supposed to be speaking all this to today, but you know, there's a lot of stuff in our life that makes us very busy. We have a lot of difficult situation. We have a lot of obstacles and a lot of trials that we must overcome. And actually one of the things this week that really um, pushed me, I think this direction this week is um, I went to the movie, The Forge. I don't know if anybody's had an opportunity to see that yet. It's the new Christian movie that's out with Pris Priscilla Shire and Karen Abacombi, am I saying that right? Com. The Forge. Um, and so in this movie, it talks about a lot of growth, compassion, forgiveness, and redemption. And um, it is an amazing movie that even though, actually I have some of that going on in my home right now. And, um, my sister-in-law lives with me and we have a 17 year old that, um, is struggling, not wanting to work and stuff. And I'm like, you've got to take him and y'all need to go see this. Um, so I'm very excited for them to be able to see that as well, because I think that, um, anybody can relate to some of the things that's taught in this movie. And I also want to push, um, one of the things that I found in my Bible when I was driving here was the verse that all started Amazing Grace. And uh, Heather handed these out at the beginning when we first started coming and it was out of Hebrews 4.16. And that's one of the things that had started and she built this uh, Amazing Grace on, which is kind of odd. I, I say that God had something in it for us to meet and stuff, but 416 is my birthday. Mm -hmm. And so it was just kind of <laughs> ironic that it ended up being that way. But that verse says, Let us therefore come boldly and to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I've needed God a lot in my life. Um, I have been married to Katie's brother for, well, we're celebrating 25 years. We've been together for 27. Um, in our entire marriage, Derek has been sick. Um, multitudes of hospitalizations um, started four months after we met in December of 96. And um, we've went through lots of chronic pancreatitis attacks. Um, he just recently had a stroke two and a half years ago. He had three brain stents placed a year and a half ago um, due to his main vessels were occluded and having stuff. I've learned a lot from Derek. Derek and I haven't always seen things in the same way. It's been a difficult marriage in a lot of ways. Um, but there's one thing I've never doubted, and that's that God put us together for a reason. We weren't promised life to be easy, and I've chose to continue to persevere through everything that's been put on my plate. I often question why I've had to deal with a lot of things that I've had to deal with um, because they haven't been easy. My kids didn't go to school one year without their father being in the hospital. 
And through those times, I felt extremely strong. I felt like God was building me up for something. Didn't know what that might be. Um, and uh, another devastation came in our life in 2016 um, on Thanksgiving Day when I woke up and my grandbaby did not. Um, I worked on her, praying that God would give her back to me. Couldn't understand. Um, extremely angry at God. I never lost my hope, but I remember very, feeling extremely lost for a very long time. And I can't remember exactly when Heather and I met, but I do remember and recall when Heather was leaving. Heather, we were actually at El Nepal. My sister and I met Heather there. And I remember just being there and just, I wasn't very vocal, just kind of taking everything in as she gave it. And I have always said, Heather is got an amazing way of delivering words in God's word. It just comes off her tongue like it was built in her. And that's because she's always in the book and she's always teaching everybody and she is determined to make sure that she gets God's word out there. I honestly thought that night as I turned around that she was going to disappear. I really, she felt that angelic to me. Um, Heather and I have continued to grow our relationship over the years and um, have shared a lot of things in, in our life that have been similar. And I think we've, we do, we consider each other sisters and uh, we have a really good time together. And I'm thankful for you, Heather, for all of that. Um, when my granddaughter passed, they um, not only did they come to my house, um, they weren't going to do an autopsy on my, my grandbaby. And um, my grandbaby was born with her ureters, which are the tubes that go from her kidneys down to her bladder, incorrectly. So she was constantly septic with UTIs and hospitalized as well. Um, she lived nine months and one day, which is um, one of the reasons that I stand before you today in some degree because I had a bonus granddaughter that's been in my life since December um, that I care for hugely and uh, her mother and her have decided to leave and I haven't seen her and today she's nine months and one day. And I feel that that's the reason God has me speaking to you guys today. Um, I'm not gonna say I hadn't cried because I have cried a lot, probably that first week I cried a lot, but it's something that has made me reflect back to when I lost Lily and we actually found out February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day, that um, my family was called to the police station. Um, my grandbaby had drugs in her system, was believed to have been given them over a period of time to help her sleep. Um, her mother, um, was mentally ill and still uncertain to this day who actually was giving her any medications, but my family got put through a lot. Um, my husband, my stepson, and myself were read our rights. We had to um, go in front of the detectives twice. My two younger kids had to go through CPS, forensic investigations, trying to build a case against her mother. So things really came up. Facebook pages came up um, of people that was wanting justice for my grandbaby. And um, I didn't join. Um, my stepson's mother was very upset that I didn't join um, because she wanted me to fight against them and to try to help find justice. At this point, 
I had come to terms that justice may not be served here on earth, but justice will be served up there. And I'm okay with that. Somebody will pay for it one day and I'm okay with that. So in my journey of dealing with my husband's health issues and the journey of losing not one, but two grandbabies, um, I've been drawn to reflect on that this week. And um, I've got a few verses for you guys. Um, the first one um, I'm going to talk about is growth. And one of the things that I look back on and know that I've grown a huge amount now, um, I failed in the beginning um, because I had so much darkness and I couldn't see past that darkness. Um, Heather helped me to come through that and help me to um, see things in a different light, even though I remember often crying and begging God to give me my life back. I couldn't, I couldn't understand why I couldn't get joy back in my life because all I did, I would go to work, I would come home, I would cry. And people kept saying, Angie, you need to take off. You need to stay at home, get yourself together. And I'm like, why? I go home and I cry. I look at her things. It was such an emotional uh, period for me that by going to work, I'm a nurse. So by going to work, I was able to help people. I was able to deflect that emotion with other people. And um, it was something that I enjoyed helping people. So um, I was able to kind of forget the things that was going on at home during those times. And so by the growth, I just mean becoming aware of myself and that I had all the keys. God gives us the keys to the joy and love that we need during these hard times. I just didn't know how to utilize it at that point. I allowed the darkness to overcome me so much. And I think that was part of Satan's plan. I think that he was going to break me any way that he could. And I could not figure out how to overcome that on my own. And so the first verse that I want to do is in Galatians. Uh, let me see here. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. I have come to realize that that God has used these trials in my life to be able to reflect and be able to grow um, more compassionate with the other people that I come against. Um, during the time that over these, uh, it'll be what, nine, eight years, nine years, 16, 24, nope, eight years. Eight years yeah. <laughs> time goes by fast. Yeah. Um, and so during that time frame, the things that have kind of opened my eyes to some of this is that, of course, this is a very, I think, I mean, we lose people on holidays, don't get me wrong, but I have met five different families at the hospital that have lost a child on Thanksgiving. That people is not, that's a godly thing. God was preparing me to be able to help them in their time of need. Um, so I do Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Even though I was growing that whole time, God was working in my life. He was helping me to figure things out. He was teaching me things that I was going to need through these trials and stuff as I continue to grow and meet people um, that need to be inspired and be helped by the things that I speak. Um, and then the compassion. When I met these people, they... Um, 
you know, a lot of people I would walk up and the nurses are like, they're not a nice person. You know, we, um, they're not, you know, they're crying, they're like fighting against stuff. But when you truly get down to the source of things, usually there's something there that is missing for them. And oftentimes it would be those exact things that I say. And so I was able to meet them in at their level and kind of give them resources and kind of lead them in a direction that may possibly help them because I've experienced it as well. And so in the compassion, um, you know, we find mercy and we get sympathy and we learn to empathize with the people that are around us. Does that mean that we all go through exactly what they're going through? No. But Heather can tell you, and if you listen to her, her verses today and stuff, that it's always better to have somebody to walk with you. And um, God's always with us through every step. Even in our darkest moments when we don't feel like he's there and present, he's there. And so in, um, in the compassion, I've got Colossians 1, 10 through 12 that ye might walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. God wants to draw us closer to him and we don't draw closer to him if we don't have our trials and we have things to overcome. If life was perfect, we get in a little wall wall land and we, we don't tend to seek him out as much as when we have our own problems. And so it's very important to have that spiritual um, and wisdom and understanding of his word in order to get us through those things in life that are causing us discomfort and trying to defeat us because Satan will lie steal your joy in a heartbeat. And, you know, there's ways to fight back. And that's through the word of Christ and uh, sharing with others and praying for others and being community to others. Um, next one, I'm going to go to John 15, 4 and 5. So the forgiveness... I can't tell you exactly at what point. I know it was close to a year and a half. I had been meeting with Heather. Um, I had actually called my best friend who worked in nursing as well and begged her to find me a therapist because I didn't like who I had become. Um, I was extremely lost and I knew that I had to fight back and I needed, I needed God more than ever in my life to help me get over that because I just was in this darkness. It was really hard. Like I said, I don't remember probably a year and a half after Lily passed, but I do completely remember this and it was like an aha moment for me. Um, there's not a day that I don't miss Lily miss her with all my heart she was our life but I remember driving and I remember feeling so selfish that I was so angry at God I remember distinctively thinking God sent Jesus to the cross for us so that we could live eternally with him and from that moment on I knew that I was gonna see Lily again. I knew that there was purpose with what had happened. Still didn't completely understand, but the understanding that I did everything to protect her, that was what I fought the hardest with. I had CPS on the case for six months. State failed my granddaughter. And I felt like it was my fault and I should have done more. 
And in all reality, God's got his time and place for each one of us. And he had his time for Lily and graciously and mercifully allowed us to have Lily for nine months and a day. Nine months and a day, we went to Great Wolf. She went to Ohio, watch my nephew race. She got to do Halloween um, at the zoo. She was the happiest blue-eyed girl you'll ever meet, laughing consistently every day. Um, just very, very special and will always hold a special part in our lives. But it wasn't until then that I figured out that I held that key that um, God had given to me to restore my freedom that I had held myself prisoner to for a very, very long time. That was restoring the love and the joy and the peace, the faithfulness, goodness, and the kindness, the gentleness that I was missing back into my heart. I still don't know why I'm standing up here. And I hope somebody has needed to hear some of this. I'm doing better than I thought I would at this point. Um, but in the end, I felt like the last verse I'm going to share um, was Corinthians 1, 30 to 31. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. God plans and promises to defeat the enemy of God and set us free. And he did just that for me. And I'm very thankful that Heather's been in my life. I'm very thankful for y'all listening. Um, and Heather's going to come up and share some of the Shirley goodness and mercy with us and uh, share just a little bit more with all of us while we're here. And I appreciate everybody that's come out today. <laughs>